when I was first learning Unreal Engine 4 in its infancy, I was a little alien to a couple things because I came from Unity. I had never even tried visual scripting before. I went on my way learning the engine before I finally realized one day that basic object-oriented program practices are indeed built into UE4's blueprint system. This was a major relief to me since I could still think more like a programmer and less like I was just wiring up breadboards. So today I'm going to show you how to use base classes and construction scripts to get basic 101 inheritance and object oriented programming practices to save you a bunch of time scripting blueprints in your projects. So let me introduce myself, Insomnia from Unreal Tech, the vision of Blender Tech, and welcome to another video. If you enjoy it or learn something, consider liking it and subscribing for more Unreal, Blender, coding, and all sorts of other CG related videos. Lastly, don't forget our motto, create your way. So let's jump right in. The first thing we're going to do is create a new blueprint script. So we're going to right click and we're going to hit blueprint class. And we're just going to choose actor, the most common blueprint script you can get. An actor is anything that can be placed in the game world. We went over that in one of our 101 videos. That is some of these stairs and blocks. That's the text, the spinning icon, the player, the camera this player start icon. Everything is an actor basically. And let's call it something like base box. We'll make all our boxes inherit from this. So all our boxes are gonna have the exact same details as the base box, except they'll have their own unique ones. So anyways, let's open base box first up. So of course, as usual, the first thing we see is a viewport, the construction script, and the event graph. Now, remember, you won't see the little circle. It's just to show you that it's that it's there for an actor. Let's instead add a component, static mesh. Now, we're not going to choose a static mesh. Next, let's go to our construction script. Usually, you would work in your event graph, and I see a lot of work where people just leave the construction script blank. They don't know what it does because there's there's no tooltip over it. People don't really know it don't know what it does. There's a little bit of help here, but it doesn't really tell you unless you really, really dig into it. This is where this comes in. So basically the construction script, it'll fire off its line whenever it's modified or updated and spawned in the world, placed in the world, whatever. So you can do a few things with that. You can use this to say change the color of an object in here whenever it's rotated 90 degrees. You can use it to add a cube at a certain time based on say a variable called number of cubes. For procedural content but the the first thing I use it for and the first thing I learned to use it for was basic object-oriented programming practices and that is so other classes could can inherit from it so let's start off very very simple we're gonna drag a wire off of our construction script and we're gonna search for set static mesh now you'll see we get set static mesh static mesh we don't want that. We want to uncheck it. We just want the set static mesh node itself. Otherwise, this won't work properly and won't be true OOP inheritance. So we're setting a static mesh any time that this construction script is going to be executed. So what target, what static mesh do we want to change? Well, that will be static mesh because all of our boxes, we're going to want to have a mesh. In fact, maybe let's rename static mesh to box mesh. That way we know exactly what, what we're going to have. Now let's create a new variable. Let's just call it box mesh to show. And if we hover over this little dot here, it says it wants a static mesh reference. So let's choose our variable. Let's go to variable type and let's search up static mesh. And we see static mesh in the list. So that gives us, a, this is a reference to a static mesh. So let's drag that and drop it right on top, a little tip for you, of new mesh. It'll connect it right up. So now every time the construction script is run, it'll go into, it'll set the static mesh, which will be box mesh, to whatever we've set box mesh to show. But we're not going to do this in this blueprint. That's, that's, the, that's the cool thing. What we are going to do, however, is choose our variable again. We're going to choose the little I next to it to make it public or 
press the little edible button. It's yellow. That's because if you hover over it, it says variable is public but missing tooltip. So if I compile and save, go back to my map, drag this in, I won't see anything. But you see, I now have a variable in here, box mesh to show. That's because I've made it public. I'm going to undo that. Let's go back into our script. So we have this public variable. Let's give it a quick tooltip. This is the mesh that this instance will render in game. So that is really all we need to do. So let's just compile and save. If we go back and place it again, you'll see again, we see nothing, but we have the option for a box mesh to show. And now we have the tool tip. This is the mesh that this instance will render in game. So now comes the cool part. Now what I'm gonna do is take base box, right click and hit create blueprint based on this. And you'll see instantly it pops up base box child. And you'll notice that our parent class it isn't the usual actor.h, static actor.h, player controller.h, it's base box. And we can even click this little icon to find parent in the content browser. It'll bring us right back to our base box. Same with the little gear icon. It'll actually open the base box so we can do quick editing. This allows you to very quickly create objects that are based off of, in this case, base box that hold this data but has its own unique data. First though, let's give it a better name. Base box child was pretty generic. If we had say 50 types of boxes, that could get very confusing. Base box child, base box child, child, base box child, child, child. But technically you can do that. You can make as many children as you want. You can go secondary, tertiary. You can go as high up the chain as you want and they'll all inherit from each other. So I'm gonna go base box or base box underscore child underscore we'll make this one green so let's go into our green base box again we see nothing because we had no mesh set but here's the cool thing if I go to the construction script notice that we have this node created for us instantly it doesn't tell us a lot about it but it does say target is base box so what's gonna happen is every time we run the level and this base box child green is is in the level and placed in spawn and and the game is run this construction script is going to run and you wouldn't think it would do anything and it usually wouldn't because there'd be nothing attached however it's going to run parent construction script which is set static mesh so you'll also notice that in base box box mesh is just the regular static uh, mesh little house icon. If we go over to base box child green, you'll notice there's a dark, dark blue and it says inherited. And I can't drag and drop this into, into the graph like I usually could. That's because it's obviously an inherited component. However, what we can do, and this is where the magic comes in, drag base box child green into your scene and then we have base or box mesh to show, sorry, just like before. But now, if we choose, let's say, cube mesh, scale that up a little bit, that's a little bit hard to see. And then we take base box. Notice that base box obviously has no static mesh, but base box child green does. So that allows individual objects to have individual properties. So now, since base box child green is inheriting this construction script from its parent. Let's quickly right click in our content browser, create a new material, and let's call it green underscore box. Let's double click on it to open the material editor, drag out from base color. Let's type in constant. We want a three vector that gives you RGB and let's make it bright green. Then let's just save. We'll go back to base box child green. Let's drag base box child green back into our level. Let's set the static mesh to what we wanted it to be, the cube mesh originally. So now we have our box child mesh and our base box is still just its own holding data for us. You'll notice however though, we can't edit the material to add our green material directly in here. It says it must be edited in a blueprint. If we go into the blueprint, we can find box mesh inherited, but it doesn't hold the data for us because it's inheriting it. So what we're gonna do is at base box, we're gonna go and we're gonna drag out another node called, now this isn't the best way to do this. You would probably have 
a, a blank a blank mesh to do this with but we're gonna go set material so the target we're gonna change is the box mesh again and the material we could select from the list but we're gonna make another new variable called material to show and we're gonna go into our variable type and we're gonna search for a material reference again material right there perfect we'll make it edible we'll give it a tooltip called the material the the boxes mesh will show in game so we'll drag that on top of set material onto material and compile and save and now base box child green inherits that as well if we compile and save and go back into our map have it selected go back to itself we now have box mesh to show and material to show and just a quick little tip if you go to your base box you can give these categories too i could i could call this colors compile and save and even though it's in the base box which isn't in my map my base box child green which is in the map now has the category colors which has material to show so we're going to choose from the list green box so we now have well okay that's kind of a teal but now we have a green box let's create another child from the base box so right click create blueprint based on this don't need to do anything just compile and save let's call it base box child oops wrong one base box child underscore red let's drag it into the map Let's choose our mesh, which will be, we can even make this one a sphere if we want. It doesn't matter because we're able to set it inheriting from the base box, which doesn't have, which doesn't have anything. If we did set it in, in the base box though, if we set box mesh to show to something, then all of them would change. So now actually let's duplicate our green box material and let's call it red box. I'm not using the standard naming conventions just to be quicker, but let's make it red and save. And we will drag that onto material to show for our base box child red. Even though it's not a box, it's a sphere. And again, it comes out kind of pink because of the lighting, but not a big deal. So that's interesting and all. We have our two little objects that inherit from base box but let's do something cool let's go to our base box we'll make sure we've saved notice how it it, it had executed these when when i compiled and saved this because it it automatically went through that and it went through both of these so every time it's updated it fires that let's go into our event graph of base box which again isn't even the map it doesn't do anything let's go to event tick and we'll go the same as before add actor local we want rotation target itself and we want to yaw it let's say 15 degrees a second y'all remember is generally turning around like a top compile and save and now watch even though base box isn't even in the map both of our meshes are spinning and so fast you can't even tell the red one is spinning <laughs> but that's very cool that we can go back and edit our base box and even though it's not in the construction script it still inherits base logic we also inherit all of its functions and if we went and created a new blueprint based on that if we went to the event graph you'll see that it has a parent tick so well these ones do inherit that and well if I drug off this and did something else it works the same way as this just now we know that it's inheriting from this so pretty cool stuff let's make it even more interesting let's go on red let's say on clicked print string red compile and save that let's go to our green on click print string green now we need to take our third person character and enable the cursor so we can tell what we're clicking on i'm not going to go into detail but you're definitely welcome to watch very quickly so i'm just quickly going to make a event begin play node and i'm going to get player controller I drag off of that since it's a single player game we can have player index zero i'm going to go mouse cursor and I'm gonna go set show mouse cursor I want to check that to true so now we should see a mouse cursor when we play perfect it'll make uh, viewing a little odd now the only thing left to do 
is event actor on click doesn't actually do anything on its own. What we need to do is it's the same thing. On event begin play, we just need to enable input. We want player controller us, so we're just going to go for get player controller and our sphere that isn't a box because maybe some of our other boxes we didn't want to be clicked and say their color. So now we just save that, make sure they're compiled. One last thing I forgot in third person character was just to set enable click events to true, compile. So now in each of these we have enable input and print string when clicked. They're compiled and saved. Now when we hit play, when we click on them we get red. You can see it firing off even and green. If we were even smarter, we could take enable input and get player controller from base box child red and base box child green since they share the same behavior and we could put that in base box. So let's go to event begin play and let's put that on base boxes event begin play. Compile, compile, compile. So now even though that they don't have the logic anymore because the base that they inherit from does, they they are able to um, they're able to inherit from that. And now we could even go one step further just to show it off one more time. We can have so that the green one, what it does is it goes set actor local offset 50 and then we can destroy actor. So it will delete itself. This is only the green one though. So make sure everything's compiled. So now when we hit play, the red one inherits everything from the base box and it does its little red print. But the green one, they're both spinning, they both have input enabled, they're both printing the strings, the green one will print green, but when we print the green one, I guess you didn't have time to see it jump up, but it would have jumped up but it destroys itself and now it's gone, now all we have is the red. So, that is basic inheritance and general basic OOP object-oriented programming practices in Unreal Engine 4. I hope you guys learned a little bit in my early morning video. Thanks for watching again from the team here at Unreal Tech, a division of BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like it. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. We're on social media on the links on your screen. If you dislike this video for some reason, please tell us why so we can continually improve based on your community input. We also take requests. So we'll see you next time, and remember, create your way.